Starboy, Junaid Boston. Boston. You're a lot bigger than these. These look good. These look good. You guys are both professionals, so I expect a good, clean fight. As a reminder, watch your heads, keep the punches up, touch gloves now, back to your corner. So the star boy, Janaid Boston, and the G-Baby, Gordy Russ II. Mouthpiece in. After all the talking during an absolutely back, wild buildup to this one, that peaked with a brawl at the press conference just a couple of days ago, finally, They'll get their hands on one another here in Phoenix. Round one, scheduled for eight in the 154-pound division. Big step up here for Gordy Russ, who has yet to face a fighter with a winning record. And three of his opponents had not yet scored a victory as a pro. We talked about his struggles with finding decent opposition to this point in his pro career. Now gets an opportunity to show what he's made of against one of the most highly touted prospects in the UK today in Janaid Boston. Yeah, you always want to break down and look inside the numbers when you're dealing with undefeated fighters. If you see, you know, a flashy record like Russ, 6-0, six, six knockouts, but who have you knocked out? 7-0, six knockout by Boston, but he has slightly better uh, um, opponents that he's actually faced and knocked out. So this is the reason I, I actually favor the stylish Southpaw and Starboy Boston right now. Very patient, looking for the jabs and the right, the right punches. No, that's a good point, Sergio. I mean, to this point, Janae Boston has been matched somewhat aggressively. He's faced guys like Corey McCullough last time out, guys like Ryan Amos, guys who have won or fought for at least area level titles in the UK. So these are guys who are coming in with a winning mindset, guys with decent records. And Gordy Russ just hasn't had that luxury to this point in terms of matching himself in Michigan. Shot there from Russ, a right hand breaks through. Russ has a good right hand, and uh, you know he's an excellent amateur, so he, he can time that, that right hand really well. But the problem is uh, he has to break the distance of Boston right now. Boston really is really good on his feet. You know, he has a sneaky uppercut once he breaks that distance. So you gotta watch watch out for the punches on the outside, on the inside as well. See Boston connect on a couple of lead right hands already thus far, showing the hand speed. Sergio, certainly when you see something like that, when you see lead right hands landing early, it's certainly a sign of maybe a hand speed differential, but also just good timing. Not only not only the hand speed and the timing, but Russ keeps his left hand really low. So there's an opening there, there's an avenue there, so you, you can see it clearly. Heavy feet, Russ. You've seen, you seen right there that he, that he missed the jab. He hurt his left foot land really heavily. So I would like to see Boston take advantage of that by double and tripling his jabs in. Heavy foot fighters hate being pushed back. Final 20 seconds here of the opening round. See that sly little foot thing from Boston. You don't hear no nothing right there. It was just a nice, swift foot thing. Those are the ones that are going to catch you know, your opponent off guard the later this fight goes. Lots of talking between Boston and Russ. We said that the, uh, the time for talking was over. It certainly is not. That has continued in addition to the action. Feel out round. Both these fighters are six foot, six foot one, you know, long reach. So they, they want to gauge the, the, the timing and the distance, the length. You know, so a feel out round, but that right hand right there, it got close to the landing on, on Boston right there. And Boston actually felt a little bit of the power of Russ. So the second round should be a little bit more telling here, but I like the confidence from Boston. And I like the, 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 the punch selection from Russ so far. Two underway. Nate Boston and Gordy Russ. 154 pound grudge match here on Before the Bell. 
I see a little bit of marking already on the outside of the left eye of Janaid Boston and in grading his most recent performance against Corey McCulloch, he gave himself a five out of 10 in particular because he did get a little bit marked up, did say he wanted to be a little more defensively mindful in this fight, but nice right hands like that might bail him out. Chopping right hand there from Boston with Gordy Russ trapped along the ropes. Russ doesn't have a quick upper body movement. You see how he doesn't react to, to punches. Look, see that his head is stationary right there. It's only going to be a matter of time for Boston lands something really big and drop or even knock out Russ. I don't like the fact that Russ is not react, reacting to these punches. Getting hit way too cleanly in the second round. I don't care how good of a chin you have. You, know, you don't want to be getting hit you know, that cleanly by a power puncher. Well, by, by a puncher, statistically, by Boston so early. And you can see how Russ, you know, wants to make this fight a fight. He's aggressive. He's the one pursuing on the front foot. But if you're going to do that, you better be moving your head. Nice left hand there. Lead left hand from Janae Boston as he just continuously switches stances and really is deciding when the two of them are going to engage. It, it is entirely on Boston's terms to this point. It is, and that's that's exactly what it is, ring generalship. You know, he's gonna he's gonna fight you from the left-handed stance, right-handed stance. It's when you open up an opportunity and what angle he's gonna attack from. See right there, he slightly switches to southpaw, and look, back to orthodox. Very, very sly fighter Boston is. Yeah, that's pretty clever work on the inside. You see Boston switching stances, going to the body. Landing combinations to the body and now just mushing Rush Russ back with that jab inside the final minute of round two. You know, when you're this naturally gifted with, with, with speed and, and hard punches and upper body athleticism, you forget about the simple things, the foundation, the jab. You know, Boston he has a really good jab. If he can start doubling that jab and being even aiming at the chin, That'll open up the straight right hand that he's been looking for on Russ. But right now it looks like Boston's having fun in there. He, he wants to get the rounds in. Boston, of course, trains in the same gym alongside Sonny Edwards. And Sonny has openly said that he feels that Boston is the most talented fighter in their gym. And I would suppose that includes Sonny. So that is very high praise coming from the world champion and a wicked body shot there from Janine Boston right before the bell. Hey, okay, well, Russ landed a nice left hook before that bell right there. So they, they, they're both landing some sneaky power punches in there. They get to get there. You were just walking like this. You can't just keep walking. See if we can get a sneaky shot that Russ landed, but right here you see the fact that Boston wants to keep him on the outside behind that jab. And once he lets the combinations flow, he looks good. Quick hands, quick hand speed Boston has. But look, you see Russ saying, oh, I'm all right, let's go. Let's, let's make it a fight. An accident, accidental clash of heads before the end of that bell right there. And that's what they see uh, complaining on the corner of Boston. Stay back. Stay back. Box. Here we go with round three. Tensions between Boston and Russ certainly still very high, as you saw at the end of round two. See, there's that home run. I mean, that's a that's a that's a punch that a lot of fighters throw whenever they're dealing with a taller fighter. That was my MO with taller fighters. A jab downstairs and an overhand right. The problem with that is you gotta you gotta lie to your opponent. You can't tell him the truth. You got a foot faint and you gotta actually make make it a convincing jab downstairs. You can't just throw it away and hoping that right hand lands. A nice right hand over the top there from Russ and Boston looked like he felt that for a moment. Now you see the smile and Boston fires back with a left hook. Best shot of the fight from Gordy Russ, who found another right hand there a moment ago. And we have a fight on our hands here in round three. Yeah, Russ is doing the right thing. He's looping the right hand, then keeping it short. There's looping it, and on the inside, he does a chopping right hand. 
So you don't know if it's coming from over the top or if it's coming real, real short behind the, the left shoulder of Boston. And confidence is just oozing out of Gordy Russ II right now. Russ explicitly said that he is looking for the knockout in this fight. That's something he said throughout his career. That's something that Stewart family in general always preaches, always be looking for the knockout. And it's those kinds of shots that could produce it for Gordy Russ if he can keep it up. See, the thing about knockout punchers is they're not accustomed to getting hit. You know, they're, they're accustomed to doing the hurting. So once they get clipped in the chin, I want to see what, what the fighter has. I want to see what the puncher has other than just a big right hand. You know, so right now, uh, Russ has passed that test a little bit more than Boston so far. Because both of them have got clipped, but I think Boston has reacted a little bit differently and shaky to that shot. Boston just missed with that right hand over the top and landed a nice body shot on the follow through. Look at this exchange on the inside. Hard right hand from Boston. See, there you go. Big right hand by Boston, but Russ reacted nicely. Calm under pressure, didn't shake, didn't buckle, still coming forward. That's punch resistance. And look at that shot that Russ just landed right there. Excellent Boston didn't right like that. Hand. He did not, and Boston retreats to the perimeter now. Maybe feeling these right hands from Gordy Russ. And this one living up to all the tensions, all the trash talk all week long. Excellent uppercut there from Russ, breaks through the middle. Final 10 seconds of round three as he blasts Boston with the right hand. Big right hand, coming from all over the place, the uppercuts, the hooks, right hand. Nowhere for Boston to hide right now, no head movement. What a round for Gordy Russ, who is fired up. And then you have Boston getting scolded by his corner, and rightfully so. He's fighting the, the wrong fight here. He should be boxing behind the jab, using the entire ring, setting up that right hand with patience. Instead, he's making it easy for Gordy Russ to land that right hand right there. The better chin is on Gordy Russ, and that's the reason Boston has not been able to hurt or even get the respect of Gordy Russ just yet. Round four begins. We'll see if Jernade Boston has a change of plans in terms of his approach here. Sergio, are we maybe seeing a young fighter, a 21-year-old here, getting caught up in all the emotions, all the trash talk, the brawl at the press conference, and sort of losing his cool a little hey, bit? Hey, it could be that, or maybe we're seeing Boston get exposed. You know, sometimes, you know, shiny, shiny, glossy records from other countries across the pond or wherever it's at, you know, you got to make your bones everywhere. And right now, we're, we're seeing a tough fighter from Detroit, you know, testing this fighter from across the pond. Well, this is the fight that Gordy Russ asked for. He sought out Janaid Boston, tweeted at him, asked for the fight to Janaid Boston's credit. He said he took a screenshot of the tweet and he sent it to the matchmaker and they made the fight. Credit to young fighters, Sergio, at this stage of their careers, being proactive in searching out and seeking out tough challenges right now. That's a nice right hand from Janine Boston. No, you definitely, you gotta credit fighters that take steps like this, but you also gotta respect the other man's zero, the other man's undefeated, unblemished record. You can't just think that you're gonna walk over, over someone that's not accustomed to losing. You heard Janine Boston's corner between rounds warning him that he was going to get knocked out if he kept fighting that way. You see the pensive look on the face of Janaid Boston, a lot more focused right now. You know, the animation that we saw in those early rounds, that is gone. I think Boston has now realized what he's up against for real. Pensive is turning into problematic right now because 
right now you see uh, Boston on the back foot where he should be jabbing. There you go. Even if it's to the chest, the chest stops the upper body from moving. You know, if you can't land cleanly on the chin, tap the chest, tap the, the torso, tap the, 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 the belly. Something to prevent Russ from just walking in the front door so easily. You know, Russ is not going to respect that movement if nothing's coming his way. And see how Russ is doing a good job cutting off the ring, so it's only making it smaller and smaller in there. Russ is not following him around. He's cutting off that ring. I think that's a good observation, Sergio, because I think a lot of people would look at this scenario and they would say, because Russ isn't always landing, that means he's not cutting off the ring. Well, that isn't always the case. I mean, one fighter could just not be engaging. That doesn't mean that Russ isn't cutting off the ring and not, doing the right thing. Not only that, Corey, but Russ is not a fast foot fighter. He, he lacks speed. He lacks upper body movement. He's a flat-footed fighter, but he is a smart puncher. You know, so if you stay stationary, he will land and zero in on a big right hand. Underway. There's Gordy Russ of the, the Motor City in Detroit, Michigan, trains out of Super Bad Fitness. Tony Harrison He's put together a couple of very good rounds here, back to back. And he said coming into this fight that we'd be in for a treat. That he's going to show everyone that he belongs at this level. Because Sergio, I think that this fight for a lot of people was categorized kind of as a showcase for Janae Boston, but they're forgetting that well, Gordy Russ is a guy that medaled at USA Youth Nationals, is a guy who was a good amateur himself, and as he gets tossed to the canvas there by Janae Boston. That's frustration by the young Boston right there. And going back to that point, again, this fight might have been categorized one way, but in Gordy Russ's opinion, I mean, this is his big break on the zone. This is his showcase. Hey man, anytime the, the B side, which in this case is Gordy Russ, gets an opportunity to shine on you know the bigger stage that he's accustomed to on television, you can bet he's gonna wanna shine. That's exactly what he's doing right now. G Baby wanted this opportunity, wanted this test, and he's, he's, he's doing what he needs to do. So far, so good. And he showed up with the holiday themed trunks, which I, I really appreciate. <laughs> However, they are torn right through the back. What is that, for? Unfortunate uh, hey, fashion happened, faux pas. That's yeah. happened to me before. Uh, it's body work there. Jane Boston getting back to some body work. Don't let the fashion malfunction, you know, malfunction what you came to do tonight. And right now, he's not doing that. Let him go, Blue. Let him go. You see right there, uh, Boston going back to southpaw. You know, he's, he's, he's moving laterally nicely, switching you know from lefty to righty, but he's not really doing anything from those stances. You know, he, he's controlling the pace of this round so far, so that's good for him. But he, he needs to get some respect, just like Angles right there from the orthodox stance landed at one two. Nice right hand. That's a good counter from Gordy Russ. Nice uppercut on the inside in reply. Because Boston's keeping his head in the same place. So even if he's landing his right hand, his, his head is staying in the right place, making it easier for Russ to land his own. Anytime you punch, you want to you wanna be expecting something back. See right there, they're exchanging punches, and Russ is getting the better of it. Yeah, he certainly so, got the best of that one. So instead, you should land your punch and dip, just like he did right there. Get yours, get out. Foot faint, get in. All right. 
It's a tit for tat in boxing. It's fencing. You know, you don't want to go punch for punch. Final moments here of round five. A round that probably looks closer to the kind of round that Janaid Boston is looking for at this stage in the fight, but still some excellent work coming from Gordy Russ. Russ just, you know, attacking Boston, and Boston's frustrated. He's frustrated with the fact that Russ is just on him, you know, not giving him time, any chance to breathe, not giving him time to, you know, relax and find his groove. That's what you want to do. But see, right hands like that, that was a good right hand right there, and he did, he did the right thing by moving his head and avoiding the two, three punches that followed up by Russ. That's his plan now. He can walk through you, or he gonna skate through right there, let him. You let him, you ain't gonna win like that. If you let him, you gotta do something, though. Other than that, stay defensive. Stay back. Stay back. Every time you throw. Box. As round six begins, Nate Boston and Gordy Russ, highly competitive. 154 pound matchup here. Big step up for Janaid Boston. Maybe a little bit bigger of a step up than he had anticipated as Boston lands a nice right hand on the exit. Oh, that's evenly matched. You know, the winner of this fight is going to deserve it. You know, it's a, it, it's a back and forth right now. You know, anytime Russ is getting his shots, are easier to see that they're, 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 they're eye catching shots. But, you know, Boston, he goes through lulls and he comes back with something nice as well. I just think the better chin has been on Russ. He's been handling the punches better. Russ tested the chin of Boston again a moment ago, looping right hand connected. And prior to the fight, Boston said it was the right hand of Russ that he had to worry about. Russ, he said that's what he has. Just, Russ just missed a big right hand right there. Boston didn't react at all. Fatigue, I think, is setting in on Boston. See that? He, you could tell by his, by his body language, you know, he wants to close the gap and just hold down because he just, I just think it's only a matter of time, man. Bo, bo, I don't like the upper body movement by Boston. Even though he's, he is punching, there's no balance. Landed a nice right hand on the inside. And further to that point, you know, he said that all Russ has is the right hand. That's all he had to worry about. And to a degree, Sergio, that has proven to be true. It has been the right hand, almost primarily from Russ, but he's done enough with it. He's varied it enough to make it an unpredictable enough weapon for Boston to deal with. If all Russ has is the right hand, guess what? He's doing just enough to stay in this fight or maybe even be winning this fight. You know, it, it's a close, competitive, action-packed fight, but I'll tell you what, Boston's been landing good uppercuts in this yes. round. In this, you know, in this fight has been landing good uppercuts, but by him staying in the same place, he's, he's getting hit with something back, so he can't take control of any of these rounds because of his head movement and lack thereof. See that? Those are shots where he landed good, something good, but Russ came back with a sweeping left hook and shook him. Couple chopping right hands connected there from Boston. See, offensively, Boston looks really good. Defensively is where he's lacking. Uppercut there from Boston, but back comes Gordy Russ with a three punch combination. And that right hand again lands from Gordy Russ over the top, but Boston stays in the pocket, connects on the uppercut. Excellent exchanges here in round six. Hard body shot there from Boston a moment ago. Punch your way out, guys. Boston putting some punches together here inside the final minute of round six. Some of the best offensive work, sustained offensive work that we've seen from Boston in the last little while. Yeah, and coming forward, pushing back Russ, letting him know that he's, he's in this final. This is a good round to hold his ground for Janae Boston. Yeah, both of them landing. Their right hands right there. There's that uppercut that uh, Boston's been landed, but he, look, his chin stays in the same place, making it easier for Russ to land something back. But this was a good round. Good round for Boston, landing those uppercuts and, and the sexy shots for the, the referees to be able to see. But you can't be getting hit with shots like that.
Wait for the bell, guys. Box. Two to go. Here in this eight rounder between Janae Boston and Gordy Russ, and the mood in the corner of Janae Boston has stabilized quite a bit since the explosion in round three, where they really laid into him and warned him that he would get knocked out if he kept fighting that way. But Sergio, I, I think there's an acknowledgement in the corner of Janae Boston that, listen, despite what they might have thought coming into this fight, it's not going to be an easy fight, no matter what. This is a tough customer in Gordy Russ, and this is a well-matched contest. And yeah, no, and credit to the trainer of, of Boston, uh, Pierce Gudgeon, because he needed that admonishing because he was going in the wrong direction, and now he took control, or it apparently it took control of this fight by boxing, being on the back foot, picking his shots, and not exchanging with Gordy Russ. You gotta use your, your advantages, you know, your height, your reach, your athleticism. The faster feet, these are all things that are on the side of Boston, but he was giving those up just to be a tough guy. Actually, the, the mood stabilizing in the corner of Janae Boston. The feet of Janae Boston have stabilized quite a bit too. Clearly, fatigue setting in on both ends. It has been pretty heavy tempo for these 254 pounders. I think starting to slow down a little bit here in the seventh. Yeah, it's smart for Boston to use his legs here because uh, Russ has, like I said, he, he has heavy feet. So you can tell right now that that, that movement is bothering him. You know, add the fatigue as well. You know, so it, it's good for for uh, Boston to be actually you know, using the entire ring and utilizing his, his advantages and reach. It's a good look, you know, instead of exchanging and, and making it easier for Russ to land something. Well, this is one of the tricky things when it comes to evaluating fighters like Boston. We'll see it, I'm sure, with Sonny Edwards a little bit later on as Boston lands a nice check left hook there. You know, judges having to decide when this is movement to avoid contact and when it is leading the dance. And sometimes it is hard for judges, as you experience throughout your career as a mover yourself, it's not always evident to them what is going on. I love that analogy, leading the dance, Corey. I, I can't dance, I got two left feet, but I'll tell you what, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to let the referees know, I'm moving because I want to move, not because I'm being forced to move. And that's a, that's a, that's a big thing. Uh, having to convince them. And look, for me, this was a good dance and a good round for Boston moving. And he picked his spots, and in the last two or three rounds, he's actually followed direction and followed the game plan, and, and things are moving in his favor again. Nice left hand from the uh, southpaw stand, and he turned into a loop in left hand. Good shots right there, good chin by Russ. He, you, you like seeing, you like seeing the, uh, the, the different angles and the trajectory of left hand, and you don't want to come in the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Last eighth round. and final round. Last round. Hey guys, this is the last round. Let's keep it clean. Bucks! Eighth and final round, and at least a, a, a tiny show of respect there between Boston and Gordy Russ after a, a lot of tumultuous trash talk throughout the week. Nice left hand there from Janine Boston. Good, that was a good left hand. Both men said they were looking for the knockout, promised knockouts instead. Sergio, we've got a, a pretty fascinating tactical affair throughout this fight. It's a aggressively tactical because both of them have their moments. Uh, I think early, you know, Russ has showed, was showing what he can do and, and, and he actually shook and rocked Boston and Boston did the right thing by switching up that game plan and starting to box on the back foot, and that's actually uh, uh, created a problem for Russ, who, who's having an 
issues breaking that distance now because of the, the lack of foot speed on Russell's part and not jabbing his way in. You know, see, that's what he needs to do. Double and triple up those jabs. Shot there from Austin Bowman. It was rolled under something. Went to the body with a left hook. Now back out to the perimeter. Yeah, Boston has a smarter jab. You know, he, he, has, he, he picks and pokes in, his, in the right moments. You know, Russ just throws him off of the fill out. And Boston actually throws him to, to land effectively and, and, and keep his opponent off, off guard and off balance. I think, Sergio, we're seeing the difference for Janae Boston here in round eight as opposed to some of the, you know, let's call it, less successful rounds that he had earlier. Now we're seeing the movement from Boston around the perimeter, lulling Russ into a sense of security and then landing some nice shots to the body, rinse and repeat. But right yeah. now, we're just seeing a good exchange on the inside. No, not only that, but uh, you can see that there's probably a little bit more left in the tank of Boston and momentum has certainly switched this way. And rocking. Beautiful Russ shot right now. there from Boston. The uppercut rocks Russ back. The right hand came behind it. What a statement he can make if Starboy can knock out a fighter in the last round in a fight that he was having difficulty with. Final 45 seconds and both men landing bombs here in the final round. Boston back to the movement there, perhaps a tacit acknowledgement that maybe those exchanges are a little bit too dangerous for his liking at this stage in the fight. Yeah, he took his shot, he gambled, rolled the dice, he's in there with a fighter, tough fighter, undefeated fighter, and Gordon, Gordy Russ the second. It was a good showing by both. Boston made the right adjustments, especially closing out strong in this final round. Tough. Credit to both these fighters, man. I mean, this is what you want to see from two unbeaten fighters. They gave it all they had, all eight rounds, and both of them got as much as they gave. Excellent fight, excellent matchmaking here on Before the Bell. A terrific test for two unbeaten fighters. Again, like we were talking about earlier, this is a fight that both fighters asked for. You know, typically at this stage in a young prospect's career, 7-0, 6-0, not necessarily calling guys out. You're waiting for the matchmaker to bring you something. You're going through the steps. Both of these guys said, no, I want another unbeaten fighter at this stage in their careers. They weren't waiting until they're on the main broadcast. They weren't waiting until world titles are on the horizon. They both asked, for a tough test, and they got what they asked for tonight. Yeah, and, and you know, both of them are going to be better fighters because of it. You know, win, lose, or draw, both these fighters are going to actually evolve into something differently. So they grew up tonight. They graduated to another stage in their, their prospect career. And look, that, that uppercut, has, that was money punch by Boston. You know, aside from the jab, it was those uppercuts. But he also was susceptible because of those uppercuts, because of the lack of head movement. So, you know, Boston was was there to be hit, and he did get hit. He did prove he had a chin. I just think he had Russ, you know, fizzled out towards the end. I think, too, for a, on a PR perspective, Sergio, when you have brash fighters like Janaid Boston, you know, guys were flashing in the ring. They liked to the trash talk outside like to be able to see them back it up with some guts in the ring. And we saw a lot of guts from Janae Boston in this fight. We saw him buzzed, we saw him bounce back and have a strong final round. We are ready to hear what the scorecards are sounding like right now. They are in the hand of our MC, Mr. David Diamante. All right, Glendale, what do you say we put our hands together out there for these two fighters, please? After eight rounds of action here at the Desert Diamond Arena, we go to the judges' score totals, and they read as follows. Gregor's Melinda, Dennis O'Connell, and Steve Gray all scored this bout identically, 79 to 73, for your winner, by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated, Starboy, Junae Boston.
79-73 across the board as the star boy, Janine Boston, remains undefeated as he waits in the center of the ring. For Gordy Russ, we'll see if those two will acknowledge one another. It looks like Gordy might be on his way out. Sergio, what do you think of the scorecard? 79-73 across the board. Um, it doesn't tell the, the true tale of this fight and this how competitive it was. 79-73 may seem like it wasn't competitive, but you could tell by the face of the winner there in Boston. He got marked up. He got hit by some shots. He got scolded by his corner. He got yelled at for a reason. You know, the star boy almost supernova in there, you know, because this is this is this is he was one punch away from getting seriously hurt. But look, credit to Boston, all right? So that's the bad news. The good part is he passed the test with flying colors onto the next one. He will be a better fighter because of this fight. Well, coming up on Saturday, January 27th, it is the return of Jaime Munguia as he takes on John Ryder in a fight, Sergio, that absolutely promises action. I can't forecast it any other way. I am looking forward to that one. And we're certainly looking forward to seeing more of Janaid Boston. And look, in the career of almost every fighter that was at one point a top prospect, they have a fight like this where they have to test their metal, where they have to dig deep. And this is the first time that we've had to see that out of Janaid Boston. And it's only something that he could benefit from moving forward. And look, and there's no shame in it. If, he, if no. Boston would have struggled with a 50-50 fighter or a, a fighter with a losing record, then it would have been somewhat of a somewhat embarrassing on his U.S. debut. But he actually struggled, and he passed the test with an unbeaten fighter. You know, so a lot of credit to the young Janaid Boston for biting off more than he could chew and passing the test. Big night for the Steel City Gym in Sheffield, England. The victory for Janaid Boston, and of course his stablemate, Sonny Edwards, in our main event coming up a little bit later on. But we're gonna hear from the star boy. Let's send it down to Sofia Gutierrez. Your US, de your US debut, you got that victory. You predicted a knockout, but you still came on on top. Tell me, what did you see in there that maybe we didn't see? Yo, I don't know why you wanna boo it. Can you better not? Yo! Louder, you! Louder! It is what it is. I didn't get the knockout. I didn't even get the half of the performance what I was wanting. For my standards, Bilal poor massively. I meant to be Starboy. I meant to be the biggest prospect from Britain. I didn't show that tonight. However, what I did show is that I could take a shot. I could dig deep under the work. Not the best of circumstances. And, and I'm happy. They touched down the last round. Now, I don't know what the referee was seeing, but hey ho, it is what it is. I win every round. I'm delighted. Thank you to the American public. We got behind the fight massively. It is before the bell, but it seemed like he got a lot of interest from the fans, and I'd like to congratulate Gordon on his part of a good fight. And we know you've been training with Sonny Edwards. Tell me, how helpful has it been being able to train with him alongside? Who, Sonny? But since it was like 12 years old, it's always been a, a massive help. Um, he looked quite sure tonight, but it is what it is. God willing, I've got the win. John McGraw got the win. Just for a few more Brits now to get the Ws. Hopefully, God willing, Sonny does his thing. And you're an up-and-coming prospect, quickly on the rise. Tell me, what's next for Starboy now that he's already made his debut in the U.S.? God willing, back to England, winning titles. Um, I didn't quite show that standard tonight, but we're gonna get them rights wrong. Sorry, them wrongs right. And get back in the gym and get back to what I do best. And that's boxing and performing. Ending 2023 with a bang. What's next for 2024? Titles and God willing, headline. The back end of next year. Congrats on your win. Thank you.